I'm here today to share this idea that art shouldn't be condensed and contained in a small cage with a studio inside of it. It should be let free. You see, art can show and visualize our ideas, and it can convey messages. We can also use art to do so many other things, but what I'm focusing on today is how art can show student understanding in the classroom. So last year, I was a freshman, and I was asked in my global studies class to create a narrative and a piece to go with my narrative, which is right up there, about a culture clash. I chose to interview and write about my dad and his adapting from a war zone, going back to civilian life. Now, in this piece, I learned a lot more about my dad, my um, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, and um, culture clash than I had if I were to say read from a textbook and write or and take a test on it. In 1983, Dr. Howard Gardner suggested that instead of three general categories in which people learn, that people have different natural aptitudes and different intelligences. For example, spatial intelligence and linguistic intelligence. Both of these people learn in two different ways, yet our schools foster an academic environment that promotes growth in only some of these intelligences. Shouldn't our schools try to foster growth in all of these intelligences? And by using art in the classroom, we can help connect our ideas and use abstract thinking to really promote this idea that people don't all learn in the same way. In 2006, a study uh, conducted by the Guggenheim Museum, Learning Through the Arts, showed an increase in critical thinking and literacy skills. This study sent teachers, or not teachers, artists into the classrooms to help cultivate a student creativity and help challenge them. So a great way to introduce art into the classroom is with PBL, or project-based learning. It's amazing because you can incorporate using your hands and non-traditional mediums to show student understanding. For example, a teacher could, or, or a science teacher could have the kids create a writing piece about a water molecule from the perspective of the water molecule on osmosis. Or an uh, English teacher could have their students visualize and make a piece showing themes in a story or book. And that really ties into how we all do so much better when we actively engage in a topic and when we do all this stuff and use our learning integratively to create things, we really foster this environment that allows art to be free and allows art to be let outside of this studio and into ourselves and into our work. And that's why art should be embraced and not sh shoved into a broom closet. <laughs> Thank you so much.